And now on to the most decorated county intermediate championship final ever in the county. It's between Austin Stacks, who have 13 senior championships. They have one All-Ireland uh, senior championship and they have two senior Munster championships uh, against Down Rangers, who have 10 um, uh, county championships. They have two Munsters and they have an All-Ireland, which they won back in uh, 1996, of course, under the great John Evans. So have you ever seen an intermediate final with such a decorated uh, list of honours? And it's on on Sunday. It'll be live and exclusive on Clover. And we'll have a pre-match sideline discussion as well. Uh, Sean O'Sullivan, who was uh, uh, slandered earlier by John O'Dowd about his <laughs> performance in goals, he will be uh, involved in that. We hopefully will represent it from Stacks and Long Rangers uh, as well and uh, of course we also have all the other games are on the weekend all on Sunday of course live and exclusive on Clover so get your annual pass or get your subscription because there's going to be some action this weekend as it comes to the business end in Kerry. Now uh, I'm going to start with John Kennedy. Uh, John this is an intriguing battle. I'll ask you this question which is I suppose not an obvious question, but for me, it's a question that counts. Austin Sachs, they went down in 2022. They were supposed to come straight back up. They didn't. Now, in fairness, they lost the semi-final to penalties. Now, they're back in the final. Now, Rangers were put down by Sachs in 2015, and this is their first shot. At it. They really haven't had a decent shot at it since, but they're back up with a good young team under Liam Hassett. Um, who needs this more both of them will want it but who needs it more is it stacks in the town are it long rangers with, with with all their young guns coming through do they need it back in mid Kerry? or you know there's only a gray left and they're only hanging on precariously left in Tralee, the, the, the capital regardless of what you have in killarney Dear Petrol, Jarvis, you know, uh, <laughs> dilapidated stadium, all that can carry on. You will have to say it, and you have a man who's barred in every pub in the carry for his views on football. Uh, but you have to say that does Austin Stacks need it more? I suppose both clubs, if you ask them, they, they want it and they need it. But I think for Stacks, um, you know, they felt when they went down to the huge blow to the club. A lot of history there. I think for the squad of players they have at the moment, a lot of inter-county experience, a lot of young talent coming through, a uh, very experienced management team. Uh, I think that they've been the favourites before a ball was kicked in the Intermediate Championship. They were, yeah. Have they played well and have they played to their potential? No. No. They've just got over the line, um, just doing enough. Um, yeah. Something seems to be missing in the games that we've seen so far this year is that, you know, uh, they're, they're about to kick and to fire, but they're not firing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, on the other hand, Lawn Rangers, I thought Fossa would, would have beat them in the semi-final. Yeah. But they, they, you know, and it appeared that they had a mountain to climb. They found a way. They did. They found a way, particularly through the scoring exploits of Owen Hassett. Um, you know, young Birmingham in the defence playing very well. Um, Moriarty. Garrod Hassett, Moriarty. Uh, yeah. You know, um, Fakery Clifford. Yeah. You know, uh, Ono Sullivan and Whittleton in the middle of the field. Very well coached and organised by, by Liam Hassett. I think John has been as on record as saying like what he did with David Clifford. Let Clifford score and we'll, we'll worry about the rest and we'll, get him, we'll score more than he will score yeah. and beat him. Um, it could be a real battle. Yeah. Uh, the pressure will be on Stacks, I think, to win. Yeah. Though they may not admit it, yeah. I think the pressure's on to win. Yeah. Uh, youth and exuberance and, and, and uh, you know, uh, a devil may care at issue from Lone Rangers. They went at it the last day. It wasn't like a semi-final of a championship. You know, they kicked yeah. some great scores. They took the game on, free-flowing. Yeah. Stacks, on the other hand, are more calculated. Uh, yeah. Very strong defence. Um, but if they kick, I, I think they'll win the game. Uh, but they'll have to, it'll have to be their best performance so far. Demo, would you, like I'd say you'd agree with John, but uh, do you think that it's a good sign in one way for Billy Lee, or it's good for him, that though the team hasn't played to its full potential yet as a team, they have, they're winning and they're in a the final, 
and he still ha- he has fellas coming back into the, the squad now like Bruno Sullivan got some minutes yeah. the last day and you've got a powerful bench like I mean you've Shane O'Callaghan mm-hmm. the bench uh, you have the the big midfielder Michael O'Donnell yeah I mean and there's other lads as well there's younger players coming Sean through Quilter, Sean Quilter not yeah well, he's knocking around Ronan Shannon so, could be back as Ronan well. Shannon will be yeah. back yeah. will be back yeah so it's going to be a tough team to pick do you think that that is going to help Billy Lee and, uh, and Stax um, possibly to get over the line the fact that it, their day to shine is next Sunday and if they do it they should win yeah I'd agree with that I think I've read the match report from the from the semi-final I think the first sentence was the semi-finals are for winning because yeah, you, you couldn't yeah. say a huge amount more about no, that semi-final no. performance like John said you'd be watching them and they'd be like maybe two or three minutes and you're thinking oh yeah we can see why these guys yeah. are favourites they're really clicking they're really yeah. moving forward and then they just kind of sit back yeah. and they kind of but Glenberg and Carr were a good team now my home club they're, they were they did I, I have to say I thought Glenberg and Carr did everything they possibly could Good, do yeah, yeah. And they with got limited the, resources they, were, they, absolutely yeah. won, they played the conditions they played the team as well as anybody could have played it but when they came down to it then they got they, were, yeah. they got the goal at the start of the yeah, second half and then it yeah. was just like I think it's, I can't remember off the top of my head but Stack scored 6 or 7 scores in a row after that yeah. and, and that was that uh, yeah. so Stacks have that in them they have, yeah. they have that in them it's just do they show it often enough <laughs> now, leaving Stack not Stack Park leaving the Stirling Stadium that day I was fairly convinced that, that Stacks are going to win this final the kind of closer it gets to it the yeah. more I'm wavering but but yeah no, I'd, I'd fancy that Stacks team just I just think you know we, we've talked about all these really exciting young players for, for non Rangers and yeah Stacks have some exciting young players too but they've got so they've got like five guys who were in the Inter-County oh, panel yeah. this year yes, and you've got another couple yeah. of lads who were in the Inter-County panel before yeah they're big strong boys I think just on the physical stakes that should that should be to, to, to Stack's benefit. I really do think that just on the physical stakes, yeah. experience as well. A lot of those boys have played in a, a, a county, most, final. county final two yeah. years ago yeah. or three years ago, whatever it was, and they played in a Monster Championship yeah. campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were in last year's semi final. They're a bit more battle hardened, they're a bit more experienced, yeah. and they're just bigger and mm-hmm. stronger. Yeah, I, 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 that, that, for that reason, I, I, I'd be leaning towards. Jimmy. To win a little bit of favour back in Killock, and I hate mm. to see you going to matches around the country not to be able to even get a sandwich, right? <laughs> um, do you think that Killock, uh, would there, and you'd know a lot about underage games up along with the last, say, decade and the things that they won, um, do you think that, that maybe youthful exuberance, let's call it that, with footballing news uh, now as well, do you think that Rangers? Um, have a chance here or in with a big shout it's as simple as this for me ok against, not for the rest ag- of us against, <laughs> against Glen Flesk against Fossil we saw 100% of what Long Rangers have yeah. all we've been seeing is 90% of what Stacks have yeah. at the yeah. moment I would say Long Rangers 100% is better than Stacks 90% can Stacks, again, I looked at them at the start of this competition. I said, no, nobody should be touching them. They've been on the ropes in a good few games. Yeah. Even against they drew Glen, it on Gaelic. Even, even it against Glen, yeah. they, they, they drew, drew it on Gaelic and Gaelic Connolly yeah. Park. They, um, against Glen, be the last day. Yeah. I mean, for me, with 15 minutes left, Stacks stopped and looked like job done we can relax now mm. hell no hell no yeah. Kerry Intermediate Championship my own club were lucky enough to win one by god we lost about four finals before it you relax with 15 minutes to go we'll stand on your heads ok well, stacks, no, we can't be doing that no <laughs> stacks <laughs> I've been looking at stacks all year I haven't paid much attention to the county league because they were without county players and so on I think they have absolutely phenomenal Potential again. So you look at what's the going under it. They're fantastic. One division two, didn't they? They're up in if, one. Yeah. If they are staying at intermediate, I'd consider that a step back for those young players, the Daniel Kirby's, the Paddy Lanes, the lads who are coming up after them. They're, they've reached the county minor final now yeah. as well. Sorry. They won the under twenty ones. That yeah, yeah. They have. And they won the county minor. And those and lads the minor are slow. going to be yeah. aspiring yeah. to play senior. And the truth is, I look at Stacks, and they should be senior, 
But I look at the games they're playing in, in the intermediate. As I said, the last day, right, you're playing well, lads, just control it. That's, you know, string of scores in a row, no close it out, and they never closed it out. They left the door ajar. Yeah, they left the door ajar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they could have maybe yeah. snuck extra time there. So, yeah. like I, I saw Lone Rangers against Glen Flesk, I saw Lone Rangers against Fossa. Dog eat dog, we want this, we'll give you nothing. David Clifford has got 3 5 at half time. We don't care who's David Clifford. Show us what you got. So you think David Clifford is not a good one? Every <laughs> one of them. He's already every David Clifford. one of them. <laughs> running straight for it, hunting for every single ball that comes near their way. The stacks team that I'm seeing so far yeah. wouldn't be able to live with that. Have you got it in you, lads? Yeah. I, I can see the medals you've won. I can see the grades you've played at and everything. That's all fantastic. How are you doing? This is battleground. Show me a bit of fight. Show me a bit of heart. You do, you can run the table. You, you, you can win the Bishop Minehan next year. But you need to prove that to me right now. I said, I said it two weeks ago about the semi-final. And I did not see it. You're very emotional about this, At some this, point, you have to show it to me. You know the feeling about this. And, and stacks. Uh, well, of course, you're back for the All Ireland final and, now, <laughs> and, and the country championship next I year. Is that a trouble? I, I, still, mean, love I you. still stand over that. That is what you should be aiming for with the players at your yeah, disposal. I agree with you. That you, is you the standard point, you should be no. setting for yourself. Yeah, yeah. I look at Long Rangers. Some of those I did fancy Long Rangers final. to get yeah. to this final. But <laughs> Sorry, Long Rangers question, no. are getting the absolute yeah. maximum out of everything. You look at the lads who are coming off the bench. They can't wait to come off the bench. They're mad anxious to get John off Burke the bench. John Burke is a gentleman. The likes guys. of John Burke and Matthew Leslie. Yeah, Matthew Leslie, Leslie in these, these rows, yeah. Shane, Shane Daly coming back in. Do you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. getting absolutely everything from every player. Yeah. Their games have been absolutely fantastic to watch. Even the Strand Road game that they lost the yeah. very first game. It was actually a very good game. Yeah. Yeah. They left a good few scores yeah, behind them. Do you know, but they played. Yeah, not they they yeah. played. Is the number of players that they have, is that, I, is that yeah. a problem for the stacks? The number of quality players they have to get the balance right? Is that is that part of I it? I certainly think it might be. I mean, for me, one of their best players this year has been Kean Purcell, mm-hmm. who wasn't on development squads up, coming up along, or wasn't kind of one of these rising stars. But for me, he's actually been one of their best players this year because... For me, he's giving 100% in games. I have no idea what dressing room I'll put you in. You get a speech there, <laughs> and Jim Hassan will be proud of, and then you have Billy Lee as well. Both of them will be looking for you. You're no, going to make some money in that. I'm a neutral, and I'd be saying to both sides, show me your best. Sure. Absolutely, you can hate me, you can despise right. me, you can load me, you can of... ring Mark Murphy morning, <laughs> noon or night with complaints. Yeah. But I'm a neutral, yeah. I love football, I love good football, show me some. Show me some. Just show me some. John, a man who does know that David Clifford is a carry senior footballer <laughs> and knows he does play with Fox. Uh, tell me this, how do you read the situation? Like, it seems to be from the panel so far, that Lone Rangers are in there with every chance, only if Austin Stacks underperform in terms of not playing 100%, playing as they've been playing all along, might not, just, might not be just good enough uh, to beat Rangers. They've got to up it a little, and with the team that, uh, and the panel of players that Billy Lee has, they should be able to do it. I was thinking a lot about it this morning for something I had to write, and... Who the, are you writing for? The way I could, uh, the way I could only describe it was um, an irresistible force against an immovable object. Lone Rangers are the irresistible force. Since the very first game against uh, Karen Zorahalis, in the four games since, they've scored nine goals and 66 points, which is basically an average of two goals and 16 points a game. Who beat them back in Kilogren? Um no, they've only been beaten in Chile mm. against Karen Zorales. The they've won Zorales, every game. Sorry, yeah, they've, yeah. Won, they've won every the game. The weekly stool, was it? In, uh, they've won, so they've yeah. won every game since. I think I said it before the semi-final that collectively they have the best set of forwards in the competition. And they proved that against Fossa in the, in the semi-final, including the likes of John Burke, Matthew Leslie, Stephen Gannon didn't even get a run. Very good Kerry no. Minor. He's very fast. He could have an impact on uh, Sunday. On the other hand, you have the immovable object which is Austin Stacks in their five games they've only conceded two goals and 47 points which is 
usually no goals basically and less than 10 points per game they've got the best defense in the competition i think this game could be as simple as the stacks defense versus the long rangers forwards and who comes out on top in that battle will win the match yeah. um with jack o'shea back with ronan shannon mm-hmm. potentially back yeah. to add in to three current kerry panelists in dylan casey joy nagel and armin heinrich this is the toughest test that this Lone Rangers forward line will face. The last couple of games have been shootouts. Yeah. Do you know, they've been yeah. able to go toe-to-toe with Glenn Flesk, with Kilcommon, uh, with Lestall Emmett, with Fossa the last day. Attack, you attack, we attack, you attack, we attack. And Lone Rangers, to the, with the bravery of Liam Hassett, especially the last day, have backed themselves. Austin Stacks won't allow that to be the game. On Sunday, it won't be like that in any shape or form. I can't see it. Do you think you have to say, with all due respect to the FASA defence, they would not have the players, the quality of players uh, that Stax has? No. Let's be honest. No. No. Stax has. I mean, you're talking about. Uh, you talked about Jack O'Shea, who was in with Kerry, right? I know that he dropped out himself, or what was the story? He wasn't probably getting game time. And you have Heinrich, you have Joey Nagel, and you have Dylan Casey. Yeah, so the there are four. You know, yeah. yeah. And you have Tansley yeah. carrying the 20 keeper in You have Joe O'Connor in the middle Joe of the car. in the middle. Like, you have, they you won't have met, Long Raiders won't have met a team that quality in my No, and, and the stacks forwards, they, while they haven't shot the lights out, no. Paddy Lane has done well. Fikna Mangan has been a good playmaker. Mm-hmm. Greg Horan can come in, can go out. Still a bit of a target man in there. Young Purcell, as mm-hmm. Jimmy says, has been doing well. Donna McKeever can kick three yeah. points the last day from play. Mm-hmm. You know, after having a poor game mm-hmm. the, the, in the quarterfinal against Legion, you've O'Donnell, O'Callaghan, Jordan Cassan, Connor Horan. They've good options as well on the bench. Yeah. Um, but I, still... They haven't put up big totals. No, and the reason that we, despite midfield dominance and a very good defence, my point is there's a number of the forwards that you've mentioned. Paddy Lane we know about, but he's young. Uh, the man is a creator rather than a scorer. Kean can score goals, but the last day I don't think he scored at all. No. Um, and so my worry is, Kimber. unless there is Sean Quilter, I don't think he's going but that's to the two points, two that's, points that's the thing, Mark. Even go back, even go back three years to when they won the county title. Did they win the county title on the basis of having great forwards no. in the no, senior no. championship? They didn't. Did they win it on, by putting up big scores? No. no, they didn't. But they ground out results. They were really hard to beat. They were very well organised. They stopped teams from playing their best against them. I can see something very similar happening on Sunday. It won't be end to end. It won't be a shootout. Stacks won't allow it to be. Um, and if that is the case, if it comes down to a real tight battle between the best defence in the competition and the best forward line in the competition, and I think Liam Hassett knows it as well. It won't be. It won't be the same type of game. He kind of hinted at it afterwards yeah. in the semi final. He said, "Look." The stacks is going to be a totally different okay, test. Yeah. What 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 Lone Rangers might do at some stages on uh, Sundays, they might throw an Owen O'Sullivan or a Stephen Seeley or a Tom Whittleton in full forward. Where yeah. did Glen Bay get their goal from? A high ball in, which Gavin O'Grady was allowed to catch, which was very poor defending by Austin Stacks, yeah. buried the ball in the net. Yeah. So yeah. I think Lone Rangers might have to go about trying to win it a different way than they won the last two yeah. matches. Damien, uh, I suppose it would be great, wouldn't it, for... The O'Sullivans, Brendan and Paul, who had a very tough year. They lost their sister in very, very, uh, you know, tragic, I suppose, the trying conditions. And it's been a tough year. And Billy Lee was telling us the last day before the game, he's allowed him to come back in. Uh, Paul has been playing and, and uh, Brendan come back in and he got some minutes the last day. And he could well play a part when legs are getting tired. You bring a lad like him on who played for Kerry, bring him on at midfield. I mean, they're a powerful bench. Do you think that really when we're looking at this, we kind of have to ignore form along the way and look at both sets of players and say, which one of these would you fancy in a senior championship game to play the Crokes, Kinmare, Ratmore or East Kerry in 2025? Who would be better equipped? Maybe that's the best way of saying it. You'd nearly have to say it stacks. Would you, John? You would, Mort, as we, we've said, you know, from the time we started here about the panel the Stacks have mm. and, and about the inter-county, and it, it does count, 
the experience. But when you look at it, they're still depending a lot on young Kirby and Paddy Lane up front to get scores. They're just out of minor. Mm -hmm. You know, so that, that's a huge ask for those. Mm -hmm. If they can improve in their forward division, yeah. they have the basis at the back, like John said, you probably you could end up with six inter county footballers in the in the sixth defensive position. You could, yeah. That's a huge advantage. You have Joe O'Connor in the middle of the field and Barry Shannon who's played Warnock at Jersey. If they can tweak it and improve up front, it'll be enough to win. And the scores of Joe O'Connor. There's, exactly. yeah. there's goals from Joe O'Connor. Yeah. 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 We yeah. were talking yeah. to uh, Wayne, Wayne Quinlan. Um, just going to say that because of his rugby background, he's just super coming off the yeah, shoulder. Exactly. And if he can do that yeah. and get a goal, that could make all the difference. Yeah. Even, in the, second, even yeah. in the second half the last year, uh, Dylan Casey and Jack O'Shea, when, when he came on, they made two runs into the Glen Bay defence. They could have gone for goals, but they fisted them over the bar. Yeah. But they have that ability to break the line with the pace mm. they have yeah, and create yeah. chances. Uh, Damien, Dylan Casey, he'd probably be earmarked to mark, um, I imagine Owen has to, yeah, somewhere along yeah. there. I think he's potential to be, I think he's 9-1 to one to man the match. I certainly would be thinking he'd be one to Candice along with Joe O'Connor if... Stacks with it, no risk, good win it as well, of course. But do you think somebody like Dylan Casey, who can defend, uh, but likes to sally forward? Two points in the semi final. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, if he has to stay back and mark, that could be something that would work against. Obviously, Joe Neil can go forward, and so can Heinrich and, and the lads. But I like to see a, a player like Dylan Casey going forward because he's a real footballer. He's got real football ability. Yes. But oh yeah, is, but if so like, my opinion doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm heading out of here. They can't face the podcast on their own. Yeah. I'm gone. It, it, yeah. It's probably worth the sacrifice. Yeah. To, to to do everything you can to clamp down on one hazard. Yeah. Uh, I think was it one one nineteen against yeah. Fossa they scored. Yeah. And it was one nineteen uh, from twenty six chances, which I think something like seventy seven seventy eight percent. Yeah. They can't allow Lone Rangers to have a seventy eight percent. Uh, rate yeah. of return. I don't think they. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that, that's kind of a high water mark. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But I just think you know you're, you're going to have they're, they're very good defenders. Uh, Paul O'Sullivan, you mentioned. Uh, yeah, yeah. You mentioned there. He's won county championships. Uh, so Kerry, yeah. with so yeah. Kerry and Stacks. Yeah. Um, these guys know no no know which way is up. I, I I just think they're going to clamp down on on, on Rangers, but they're not. Like you say, they're not scoring enough. Yeah, 14, yeah. 14 points. Yeah. Like. It's somewhere in around 60% for yeah. tournament chances created. Was that, it 8 points all or 9 points all against them? Great, something like yeah, that. Yeah, 8 points each. 8 yeah. points each. So that be, but that country is desperate but, but, that evening. But, but, yeah. but maybe, you go back to the Glenby match, and Jimmy pointed it out, are they are they running through the through the ticker, or through the tape, or I should say? Yeah. Um, they kind of stopped mm -hmm. and let Glenby come yeah. back into it. If they kept going, that 14 points could have been 18 points, and it could have been a lot more. Yes, a lot more yes, yes. They have that in should be. Are they, are, are they ruthless or rootless, whatever the word is, uh, depending on what country you're in? Um, <laughs> what, what, uh, I was like a yank there for a minute. Well, what, Jimmy, uh, we're talking about a man who is uh, like to call a spade a spade and not for shovels. Jimmy, you restored this panel to some sort of sanity, right? And critical right. thinking. You tell us why you think Long Rangers are going to beat Stacks, because that's the way you've been drifting earlier. I don't. Oh, you don't? I'm not trying to be a contrarian. I've said you from are contrary. day one of this podcast <laughs> yes. that I expect Stax to win the county championship. I expect them to be capable of seriously competing. I think they should you go said on and win they an go on the All Ireland. That they should go on and win an intermediate All Ireland. So they have to they win have, this one. They have yeah. that kind of quality in their ranks. Yeah. But they should have been doing a lot of things in football matches up to now that they haven't been doing. Do it. Yeah. Is it that they can't do them? Yeah. Is it that they're just not doing them? Have they have they overlearned the lesson? Have they overlearned have the lesson from Costa last year? That they're they're afraid to get caught. I don't think it's that. I think if you if you actually go back to that twenty twenty one county championship that they won. It was actually very defensive. There was this thing yeah. at the time of, oh my God, you know, Jack Morgan, Jack O'Shea, look look at what these guys are scoring from the full back And David line. Warren left and, the scene very early. And, and, and you're yeah. kind of pointing out that 
the reason that the cornerbacks are scoring is because everyone else is falling, falling mm-hmm. back and they're the ones breaking on the overlap. It's, it's, it's a system. It's not that these are incredible cornerbacks doing it that way. Last year, in fairness, Niall O'Callaghan was on this podcast one of the first days and he called, oh. out, the, oh, yeah. Niall, he called out the football the Stacks played last year and absolutely, yes, that... Listen, they did more or less had Shane O'Callaghan as a lone front man and everybody else back behind the halfway line. Now, they're not doing that this year. Yeah, actually, but I remember him not, saying that yeah. if, if they continued playing, they were playing. He fancied them to win it out, yeah. providing they changed their style. No, I and do, the question is, have they? I do think they've improved a lot on what they were playing. I still don't think they are what they could and should be. I I think Lone Rangers are absolutely getting the very best out of themselves. They're tip top. It wouldn't. Lone Rangers' best wouldn't beat Austin Stack's best. But I ask again are we going to see Austin Stack's best? Because if this is the level that they are at, (laughs) then. I give Lone Rangers a very, very But big Jimmy, chance. I'll be on to Channel in one second, but Jimmy, you've now talked yourself around in the circle. <laughs> in the, in the whole, you've gone down the rabbit hole. You started by telling us that they were going to be all Ireland champions. Then they're good enough to win. Then I challenged you because you said that they're not playing their full potential. Can Lone Rangers beat I'm them? Saying, and you said, no way. And then, I'm and you don't have a difference. All along, very first <laughs> sentence I said about this game tonight is that 100% of Lone Rangers could well be enough to beat 90% of Austin Stacks. So you're and wanting Austin Stacks to improve? That's still the issue. Yeah. Are we yeah. going to yeah. see Stacks as they can be? Stacks will have to give their best or performance at, so far. Or okay. are we going to see Stacks as they have? Yeah. Liam Brosnan, uh, sorry, John Kennedy. <laughs> uh, you, the two Johns are going to finish with you. Do you think that Stax will be able to, as Jimmy says, get that extra 10% uh, and win this? Which could be after a battle. I yeah. don't think there'll be much in this game now, mind you. But I do fancy Stax. I'd like to see Long Rangers, obviously, as well. Farmer club of mine. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I boring. actually did play with this club. <laughs> at the, in the back pitch in Spitzel Stadium. Pat O'Shea, who wrote that book, Brought me and kidnapped me, well, didn't kidnap me. Brought me in a car with a few more fellas. We were from the Duke's area, which was, there was no command there at that time. Well, it was there, but there was no football team, right? And we could go to Glimba or we could go to Long Range. And we started on the 12 at Long Range. Glimba heard about it and they rescued us back. There was a kind of a, a raid in Kilog and the hostages were released and we were sent back to. Glimba to Kushna home. But anyway, go on. Uh, so I think Austin Stacks will win. But they'll have to improve. They'll have to have their best performance so far. Yeah. I don't think the semi-final performance would win it for them. Very good. Demo? Yeah, I'll... St- I, I, I'll st- I up, like, say I've been wavering all week. <laughs> uh, I started with Stacks. Then I started yeah. wavering towards Rangers. Did you do a preview in the carry line? I did. And, and I who went, did you go for? I went for Stacks. Well, you go for them again. So, so I'm, well, I'm not going to go against myself. Yeah. I think there's more to come from Stacks. Yeah. And there is a chance that Lone Rangers peaked uh, with that semi-final performance and they might not be as good again. Yeah. So I look, I'll go with Stacks. Yeah, and i tell you one thing. If they, get to the, if they win on Sunday and get to the Munster Club final, I'll allow you to cover that since you won't be there on Sunday. Uh, <laughs> or I'll talk to your bosses. Uh, no, talking about bosses, my boss now and the man who tossed me off a gantry back in Kiel, not deliberately now, it was an accident, uh, but I think it was a push. Arrow was 50 50. It was 50 50. <laughs> it, it could have been a black card. There was a lot of premeditation. <laughs> right. Now, Jimmy, I'm kind of confused with you. I'm normally confused with you, but I'm more confused now because you've gone from uh, Austin Stacks are good enough to win the All Ireland. Uh, well, maybe they could win this if they increase by, uh, improve by 20%, and then long range is a rare to go. And you gave a half time speech, and Liam Hassett will be ringing you soon when he sees this and saying, Will you come into the dress room before and then give that speech that you gave on, on camera the last day? Who do you think is going to win it, really? Are you going to commit? I'll give Stax one more chance to convince me that they can win the All Ireland. That they can live up to their potential. 
yeah. They haven't, they haven't been doing it. It's fair enough. They yeah. can do it. Yeah. They have good people with them on the yeah. sideline. Yeah. I, yeah, I think. Yeah. I, th I think they will. So I like Rangers. Rangers have been absolutely fantastic to watch. Yeah. And they've, they've been building a long time. They've been very unlucky with kind of immigration yeah. and so on. Yeah. Um, and hopefully that, that has stopped and, and they will be coming. Yeah, um, and, at the, and at the risk of you know you, you want me to shut up now, but um, Long Rangers will win an intermediate title and they will go back senior. Yeah, uh, I think it's both, only a question. It's of only when. a question of when yeah. I think, yeah. uh, and I just think maybe they're a little bit, a little bit maybe they're ahead of schedule or I, they yeah, need a bit yeah. of seasoning. You, I, you need more comments out of you, and you won't be invited to Long Rangers social. I actually think long term. There are a couple of clubs down in intermediate who looking at the population bases and so on should really be going back up to senior. There are a couple of clubs in senior that I think would be doing well to hang on to senior over a generation. Yeah. You know, you get one team that'll get up there, yeah. but to maintain that requires, as I said, What say, about your own club? Uh, what about Spar Day and that? Uh, no, they've decent population. We're, we're, a, we're a good intermediate side. There are houses being built in the area. Can I get one? We, <laughs> we, we, can I move in? <laughs> we have a chance. Another club. <laughs> <laughs> We have a chance, but it, it's taken a massive amount of work, by you a hold, massive amount of people to get the, us this yeah. far. Would you hold a community it's, meeting for me and find out would I be accepted in spa? Would you propose me? <laughs> would you? Do you know for the crack of it? I will. <laughs> <laughs> and what's more, JC, you can come and take the meeting. Uh, John, no doubt, couldn't, find couldn't me. Take long. This is our, take last word, our last word on the carry. Oh my goodness, we've gone over time. Last word on it, uh, uh, who do you fancy? The Lone Rangers style of play has been absolutely refreshing to watch in the competition. They've, de they've been the best team, aesthetically wise, to watch from beginning to end in their matches. The attacking style of play they've used, the youthful exuberance, the attack, attack, attack philosophy of management has been fantastic. However, I do think this set of Austin Stacks backs are the only set in the competition that have the beatings of this Lawn Rangers forward line. So I do think that if Stax can, as John says, improve to a degree up front, because they will have to, mm -hmm. they will have to get more scores potentially than they did in semi-final. Um, if they do, I think the defence is good enough to restrict uh, Lawn Rangers at the other end, and I give the nod to Stax. Brilliant. I think that's a fair summary. We've had a, a, a good discussion there uh, with the star of the show being undoubtedly Jimmy Darcy <laughs> O'Sullivan, who has swung so many ways that he now has a crick in his neck. And if he drives home, he'll have to reverse all the way to the spa because he won't be able to look anyone straight in the eye uh, next weekend when he meets both managers. Uh, unfortunately for him, We'll probably send him to Bros Brosna or somewhere like that, where we can none of neither Liam nor Billy can get at him. But anyway, lads, it was good fun. Thanks very much to the panel. Uh, John Kennedy, thank you. Damien, thank you for sparing some of your valuable time. You could have been singing the blues. I could have been. Uh, you could have been exactly. Jimmy Darcy, as always, entertaining. I do forgive you for the push. Um, and thanks and, to, to, to Strand Road for the And uh, thanks to again. John. Uh, O'Dowd, thanks to John O'Shea for being JC, as we know him as, uh, for having the patience to actually uh, film this. And uh, thanks to the Cairns O'Reilly's Club, Strand Road, this is our third fourth time being here now. And when I make a call on a Tuesday or Wednesday to Pat Flavin, no problem. Uh, we welcome with open arms and we really appreciate it. And they're another club, of course, which you didn't mention, who would have lived re realistic uh, ambitions are coming back up to senior level uh, again. Now, just a reminder that on Sunday we will be showing all the knockout games and the county uh, intermediate final sponsored by Kerry Petroleum live and exclusive on Clubber TV. So, as we keep repeating, it's the only place you'll see it. And that final where they have 23s at uh, county, senior county championship. Uh, Spichinum, uh, 13 for Stacks and 10 for Low Rangers. That'll be some contest on Sunday. Uh, the throwing time is 3 o'clock for that. We'll be on at 12.45 as well with...
the uh, junior uh, premier uh, semi-final uh, Bally Mac are playing uh, in that one against Fireys and we have a double header in Tralee John will be in action there I think Tarbert are playing in one of them there yeah. and, um, and then on the other one we have of course Art Fert uh, and that's a big one against Sennens and a lot of us have gone against Art Fert and actually tipped Sennens which is against the general I'd say punditry out there or opinion on the supporters. So next time, if Adfert win, next time we go to Adfert, I think we'll have to go to Abbey Dorney. Um, and don't forget, Mert, as well, about the, the minor final for the Monday night. The minor final on Monday night will be live and exclusive on Clubber TV. We do half an hour there as well. And uh, <laughs> that, no, we have no more half an hour to do. Um, and that is between Austin Stacks, who <coughs> could be going for the treble. If they win on Sunday, they'll be going for a treble. Minor under 21 and senior club, which is some achievement uh, if they can. And they'll be playing in that final St. Kieran's, and that should be a good battle as well. That's on at uh, seven, seven o'clock, seven seven o'clock in Austin Stack Park, and uh, we'll be can- carrying that game as well, live and exclusive in Clover. So, a lot of action Sunday and Monday on Clover from Kerry, the home of football, the cream of football and the kingpins of football. Unfortunately, the panel didn't measure up to the football <laughs> today, and I apologise profusely for that. So that's it for uh, today's episode of Kingdom Calling. Mark Murphy signing off, and we'll talk to you again next week.